briefcase, briefs, and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In a dramatic family execution of power, a son found himself in court fighting for his collaterally denied inheritance. Richard Harmon, the outcast, was disinherited by his own mother, Josephine Harmon, under questionable circumstances. The twist in this cloak-and-dagger saga was the perceived manipulation by his brother, Harold Harmon, and sister-in-law, Virginia Harmon. Richard Harmon claimed that the pair had fraudulently convinced his mother to transfer her valuable properties onto them, curtailing him from his expected inheritance. Richard Harmon challenged this disaster pivot by filing a complaint, alleging wrongful interference with his rightful inheritance. As the dispute festered, the Superior Court puzzlingly dismissed his complaint. The court upheld the motion by the defendants, Harold Harmon and his wife, insisting that Richard's complaint, quite ironically, did not express legitimate grievance for relief and deemed that he lacked standing to proceed. Faced with this legal gale, Richard Harmon lodged an appeal at Maine's Supreme Judicial Court, a timely move that attracted Justice Nichols' attention. The court found a sense of justice to accord Richard. It ruled that a son and expectant legatee, even with an expectancy rather than a vested right, can wage a tort action against a third party for wrongfully interfering with his intended legacy. In a verdict that petitioned Richard Harmon's sense of justice, the court elevated his appeal, overturned the dismissal order issued by the lower court, and relegated the case back to the trial court for further proceedings. The course of action set a judicial tectonic shift that not only recognized but also safeguarded a prospective beneficiary's right to enforce liability for any wrongful interference with an expected legacy. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.